here and now, here we are. And uh, the time here and now is the time of war. Agreed. We're in a, an escalating war, not a war winding down, you know, as would seem by this truce. There was a no. massacre yesterday of, you know, 500,000 people, you know, in a residential area. <clears throat> and General, the um, and Defense Minister Gallant has announced as well that they intend to continue the fighting into the south. So they want to uh, do an ethnic cleansing, a genocide, you know, whatever, you know. And uh, it's like as if they're, you know, making this a model of how they're going to treat the whole... Uh, you know, no. the peoples in the South, you know, like they're subject to genocide, you know, if they don't, you know, you know, play the game. Well, this, this, this most recent act of barbarism, to me, it's kind of, to me, that to, to me, Israel has crossed a line now. Yeah. Because you were asked to extend the truce. You won't extend the truce. You won't have a ceasefire. No, you won't have it. You just want to kill people. Huh. Well, that's all you want to do, huh. is destroy and kill people. So it seems to me, if nobody's going to declare war in Israel, it's not going to stop. Somebody has to declare war. In the old, and that's how I see it right now, because they're not stopping. Hmm. They're not stopping. Yeah, they have, a, they, have, they stopped, got some prisoners released, and they're killing. They go, they go on killing. Yeah. So, if nobody declares war, they'll keep it up. That's yeah. all that will stop them. They declare war on them and begin to hit Israeli targets yeah. in Israel. Some yeah. governments got to, if if nobody does it, it will not stop. That's now. I'm, I'm not saying I'm advocating that, but that's how I see it right now. Yeah. Or it has to protest around the world. At 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 these really com uh, really consulates and embassies, gotta go in, take them over, and just what well, something we gotta do something very systematic, not drastic, but something systematic and attention getting because they're just gonna kill keep, they're gonna keep killing people. Mm, yeah. They've shown this right here, given the chance to have a peace, they want to kill. And that's a sign of a psychopath, a mass murderer. You know, so that, that's to me, there's, there, there's a certain psychosis going on here. Yeah. They don't have to do this. No, they don't have to do this. They don't have to kill people. No, they don't. They, they don't have to bomb nobody. Mm. And to me, in the United States especially, Biden and Blinken must be called on the carpet right now, today. Mm. Next week, I mean, you had a peace agreement. You know the U.S. has some. To that. You know the U.S. State Department and the U.S. government has some to that peace with that, with that truce. You, we we know that. It wouldn't have gone down if the U.S. government didn't didn't demand of Israel. The U.S. government demanded of Israel and 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 they got it. But now is U.S. government going to say we want more 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 civilian killed? Especially when Blinken is on the record saying he wants more less fewer fewer, fewer civilian killed. What's happening here? Hmm. I think I think there are some political questions that have to be asked right now, today. Hmm. What's happening here? Why is this going on? And what what is the government's stance on this? If this is a, if this is a response to responding to politically, this particular bombing right here, you just came off of a truce of a of what they call pause. Hmm. So the so you pause and really kill more people. Hmm. I don't know. It, just, it seems to me that this is they have they have, they have crossed the red line, mm -hmm. and if no government is going to declare war on them and begin attacking Israel with bombs and drones and missiles. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They need to. I think they. I think they. They've earned a war. They've earned someone called. They have earned the right to be considered someone's enemy and 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 to send missiles missiles in in, in Israel to stop them, mm -hmm. unless something else is going to happen. I'm not advocating that. I, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, yeah. I'm being supplied with $14 billion worth of uh, bombs. What's happening here, I think, is two wars. One, there's 
a war, a political war with Hamas. Okay, so they're fighting Hamas. Hamas has 27,000, you know, fighters, and they're taking on, uh, you know, like uh, 937 tanks and uh, then the armored vehicles and then the uh, helicopters and then the airplanes. And then the other part of the war, the other war that's being waged is being waged on the Palestinian people by the Air Force, which right. is not hitting Hamas targets. It's just, no. hitting, you know, Palestinian people. You know, there's two wars happening. There's two layers to the war here. One underground, one on the surface. Surface wars against the Palestinian people. The underground war <clears throat> is the Hamas and the uh, Islamic Jihad and the um, Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. All the militias are fighting against the uh, occupation. And they're doing quite well because they've developed, you know, a missile, a hand-launched, you know, missile, which is able to penetrate the armor of the uh, of the vehicles that they have, the Merkava tanks, and the latest version of them as well. So, you know, the comment that I heard uh, uh, on a video that I'm currently watching, you know, is that this is actually, you know, like a war on the uh, third world peoples, and this is, you know, a model for how they will be treated. This is, you know, like a, you know, a turning point. You know, this is, you know, a turning point to fascism or socialism. This is, you know, worldwide, you know, event. This is a yes, world yes. that is developing not only into a regional war, but it's developing into a, a world war, you know, with the alignments, you know, that are, li are, are coming together. And uh, which is going to engender a world revolution at the same time. This is, you know, uh, something that we have to be ready to cope with. And I'm ready. You know, I'm going back tomorrow to the Jewish community campus, you know, building, you know, where I was first arrested for having written and a free Palestine. <clears throat> and uh, I've got my I've got my painted sign here. That I painted myself. That I'm going to. Uh, if you can see, it says, uh, where's the focal point? It says, oh yeah, here. One Holocaust does not justify another. Okay, so this addresses, you know, the the um, psychology of the Jewish community itself, which is, you know, <clears throat> stoked into a trauma, uh, a state of trauma, you know, uh, in which the government is trying to say, you know, that the Hamas attack was equivalent, you know, to the Nazi Holocaust on the Jewish people. And so people, you know, start to remember, you know, all sorts of things, you know, happened to, you know, their family during the Holocaust. And they think that they're, you know, like obliged, you know, to carry out an extermination campaign against Palestinian people because all the Palestinians are Nazis now. This is the mentality that they've been brought to. But the Israelis themselves, you know, and even the military, you know, like are backing off of this, you know, psychosis that you mentioned. And uh, there will be rebellions, you know, within the military as well, which will refuse to serve in Gaza. And well, I'm going to be going back, you know, to the Jewish community campus, you know, every day during the afternoon, you know, to do the picket line. Even though up to now, I'm still alone, you know, but I'm appealing, you know, to uh, some of the other, you know, older members, you know, of the Jewish opposition here. Don't know the young people, don't know the student, you know, Jewish groups or anything like that. And then, and then the Marxists, you know, like a Jewish, you know, uh, comrades, you know, they don't want to get involved with a Jewish Bundes like me. <laughs> so, you know, I have to go to the extreme, you know, of uh, declaring a hunger strike tomorrow as well, until there's a ceasefire in negotiations. So this is the maximum that I can do right now, and this is what I'm going to do tomorrow. Okay. Um, who is going to be keeping up with this as far as the media or your or your social media posts? Yeah, I've got the 5,000 on Facebook, you know, that I can broadcast to. Okay. I'm uh, back on live uh, Facebook. I got back my uh, video broadcasting right <laughs> Good. that I was banned for for uh, uh, during a month. Uh, and, uh, and then, uh, uh, but I prefer to record now, you know. Uh, I, I've sort of, you know, like a broken off of, you know, doing Facebook Live, you know, that I was enchanted with before. <coughs> So I record live, you know, on the new phone that I have, and then I can, you yeah. know, upload it, you know, to both um, uh, Facebook and YouTube, you know, so that it's Very preserved. Good. Because, you know, who knows what's going to happen to Facebook. Yeah, well, well, I get you. Time will tell what, what happens to Facebook, what happens to Facebook and... And, and YouTube, Twitter. yeah, as well, you know, like uh, I've had trouble with YouTube as well. 
No, this is, at least uh, we have some of our own media platforms. Well, you know, that's, that's one, I was telling someone a few weeks ago, and this is, this, this should not be construed as my support for the, for the fascist right wing and the racist movement in this country. But they don't use Facebook. I mean, excuse me, they don't use YouTube as their sole way. They use many different platforms, Rumble, BitChute, and they have their own social media platforms. If we have your own social platform, you can put anything you want on your platform yeah. to let people know it exists. Yeah. YouTube has nothing to do with it. Uh -huh. the, the right, the right, the right wing in this country has their own, their own semi-internet. You uh -huh. log right into their into their internet to watch their programming, and nobody stops. Now it costs money to do that. Uh -huh. You know they want they, they want people to donate, but I think I think you're on, I think you're on the right path. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think so. I think so. Um, so, I mean, I want to get back to what happened. It's this mass murder. And God, I want to talk about this a little bit because, yeah. you know, is this supposed to, is this supposed to scare the people from fighting? No, this is supposed to scare the people into leaving the North because, you know, three quarters of the Palestinians didn't leave the North. You know, the, because the, you know, the poorest, you know, the Palestinians, you know, cannot leave. They have no way to leave. Even, right. You know, like, so the refugee camps are still there. So that's what they're bombing, the refugee camps, which are the most densely populated, of course. So, and these are the refugees, you know, from from when? How did these refugees appear in Gaza? You know, like, you know, half the population are refugees or 80% of the population are refugees. You know, where do these refugees come from? They come from the very towns and villages that were taken by Hamas on October the 7th. That's where those refugees came from. That was oh, their town. I see. Ashkelon was their city, you know, and they got booted out of there into the Gaza Strip, and, you know, half of the Gaza Strip, you know, that was allocated by the partition plan. They ended up living in refugee camps, and now they're getting bombed again, you know. That's no good. Yeah. That's no good. And I, I, I think we also need to look for look for any emerging splits but i think you you mentioned that within the army hmm. in israel itself and with and within the uh pro-zionist pro-zionist community worldwide but this should shake some people up if it doesn't you would really know what you're dealing with then yeah you know, i keep telling you after a truce to kill this many people deliberately attacking civilians and you and that doesn't shake you from supporting such such mass murder. Yeah. Uh, um, I I you know I don't know last time we had our discussion. I don't know if we talked about some of the splits that occur within the State Department. Oh, so yeah. people within the government quit yeah. and wrote public letters of resignation and disgust yeah. at Blinken and Biden. Yeah. They were shaken to leave. They had to get out of there. Yeah, I mean, I I, I support them having some, some principles. Mm. You no, know, we have. Sometimes you have to say, "No, I'm not going there with this. I got to go." You know. Uh, anyway, that, that's how I see it. I I haven't seen any uh, recent reports about uh, 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 refusals, uh, refusal, refuseniks. They're called. You know, um, <clears throat> uh, any military refusing to fight. You know, but uh, I I heard something. You know about. Um, a lot of the troops, you know, who are are refusing to fight in gas, and they're and they're uh, they're pulling out. Uh, but uh, you know, nothing, nothing major so far, you know. So it's, but the uh, this current government, you know, is going to go for as as the American expression says, it's going to go for broke. They're going to put everything into this, you know, because they're. They've lost the popular support amongst the Israelis to get elected again, not because they're they're fighting the war and losing, but because they were so outmaneuvered on October the seventh. You know, there's even a report now that they even had a copy of the plan, the Hamas plan to attack in this fashion, on a multi-level fashion. You know, air, sea, and land. You know, since a year ago, and they didn't believe it because they didn't think that Hamas was capable of doing it. They didn't think that Hamas was that smart. <laughs> they thought it was just wishful yeah, thinking exactly. of Hamas. <laughs> so they uh, thought uh, themselves, uh, you know, the Zionists, you know, are so 
brainwashed that they've brainwashed themselves into believing their own lies. Well, well let me ask you something. Do you do you do you believe that? Here, here, here's here's my stance on that. Could this be propaganda created by Israel? Could this be some propaganda, a lie, a lie someone's spreading for some reason? It would be very hard for me to believe that Israel, knowing, having these plans, that nothing would be done even to investigate them? That doesn't sound right to me. Oh, no, they didn't necessarily know. <laughs> they had this 40-page report available. But it wasn't passed on to the uh, to the war cabinet. It wasn't passed, and because the upper, you know, like uh, administration in, in the intelligence, you know, uh, field there, they blocked it. You know, this is only a report from a lowly woman, you know, intelligence officer, who made this report, and she's a woman as well, you know. So how could she be believed? <laughs> so, so somebody, so somebody, somebody who is a female in the spy community in Israel had a report. And and it would and and the her next level commanders would not would not pass it up. That's right. Yeah, yeah. They you know, didn't believe somehow. it. They wouldn't believe well, it. They refused it, it, to believe it. it. <laughs> well, if that's the case, they should be fired immediately. <laughs> oh yeah, they will. I mean, you know, all the Israelis are getting are becoming aware of all of this. They're becoming aware of the fact, you know, as well that you know their their own, you know, like people, their own, you know, like soldiers and their own civilians, you know were, you know, bombed, you know, by the Israel military, you know, this is coming out as well. In particular, this is why the ceasefire, you know, broke down, because, you know, Israel was demanding you know, all the women, you know, that should be released. So, you know, Hamas said, okay, you can have, you know, these three women soldiers who were killed by your own bombings, you can have their bodies. And Israel refused. How could they accept, you know, their own soldiers that they'd bombed themselves, you know, to be returned, you know, as evidence? Oh. To be well, used against then, themselves. Well, then, no, well, then Hamas has a right to bury them somewhere or to burn them. Because at a certain point, that body is going to start decaying. They don't right? have any fridges right. there anymore. They don't have any electricity. Well, then, well, then know, Hamas, is, Hamas, is just, Hamas is simply burn their bodies. Not in, to me, not in hostility. No. Yeah. But in respect. In respect for them. Not just in respect, you know, but, you know, to preserve, you know, like, the health of the community, you know, like because you know yeah, that's a source of infection. So, right, right. But if they right. do, then Israel will accuse them, you know, like of a, an, an atrocity, you know, because they burned I, I, an Israeli I body. I understand, but this, at this point, if they were willing to, they were willing to take the bodies of the of their own soldiers. Yeah. And the body, we assume they have not been embalmed, and maybe they have been embalmed. Okay, we're assuming that they haven't been embalmed. Mm -hmm. They had them for about a month. They must be in pretty bad shape, unless they have, unless there's a a cultural way of preserving the bodies within that community that allowed them to even be able to be given up. Well, they because, were more recently, you know, killed, you know, by the bombings, you know, not since October the seventh. Oh, these are oh, presumably okay. taken hostage, you know, live, you know, on October the seventh, and then they get bombed, you know, by their own military type thing. I see. I see. I see. Okay. 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 That, uh, that makes time, sense. You know, for them to recover the bodies, you know, but they don't want the bodies. They don't want well, the evidence of what they've done to their own, you know, soldiers. So well, that's why there's, you know, war again, basically. Well, like I said, if 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 no major powers, power or powers, is going to step in and clear war in Israel, then to me, all we can hope. I mean, my my view. And if the and if the diplomatic back channels and front channels aren't working, apparently they're not working to stop mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Then we have to keep demonstrating, and we have to support the uh, resistance fighters because that is the only hope. Yes, but <clears throat> the mass demonstrations are not going to work. The mass demonstrations no. worked, you know, to get a truce, but now you know that's that's gone. You know, that's shot. The mass demonstration is not going to work. You know, what I think is a strategic, you know, action that Western activists, you know, can achieve is by intervening inside the Jewish community. And I'm talking particularly, you know, to the Jewish comrades 
they have to get inside the Jewish community. You know, like going to a Palestinian <clears throat> demonstration to show, you know, your solidarity is fine, you know, for morale, you know, but it's not doing anything. Yeah. You have to go inside the Jewish community so the Jewish community will disown the Israel government, denounce it to their family members in Israel, and uh, wrench them out of the grasp of this Zionist ideology. We have to defeat Zionism, and it has to come from within the Jewish community. I'm talking about a Jewish revolution against Zionism, and that's what I'm going to go into, you know, tomorrow at the Jewish Community Center uh, camp. Well, I mean that that is that is a viable law. That 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 is a very viable strategy. Because right now, I mean, I still support the mass demonstrations. Yeah. But I think any other strategy of influence that can cause a split within those who support Israel is going to be by is acceptable to me. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to the demonstration today because I can't exhaust myself. You know, I have to get ready for yeah. tomorrow because I'm going to go right. back there <clears throat> every day now. Every afternoon, I'm going to be there and not just once a week. Yeah. And I'm going on a hunger strike, too. You know, this is I've done before and I can do it again. And it has to demonstrate, I have to do that to demonstrate, you know, to the Jewish community that this is serious, even though I'm alone there, you know, like this is, you know, like has to be considered, you know, with the utmost seriousness. And like my yes. painting says, you know, like one Holocaust does not justify another. And I think a majority of the Jewish community is going to agree, but they have to agree, you know, and do something, they have to say something, they have to stop, you know, the Israeli government, which... <clears throat> is lost in any case, but they're going to destroy everybody to go down with them. Well, we we need to stop that at all yeah. as, as quickly as possible. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> all by myself. No, no I'm, it's going to spark people into action. It's got to, you know, like, otherwise... It's as if, you know, like, you know, you're facing the Holocaust of the Nazis. And, uh, you know, like the Zionists, you know, took the uh, point of view, you know, that, uh, that the Nazis, you know, had won. That there was no way to stop fascism. That uh, Europe was inherently fascist, you know, and that they've always, you know, oppressed the Jewish people and they always will. And there's no way to stop it from happening. Therefore, you join them. And you offer, you know, to form another branch, you know, the fascist international movement, and you set up a, another country, but under their control, under their national bourgeoisie, and only according to their exclusive interests. You know, that's what Zionism, you know, uh, was the response, you know, to Nazism. And now they're replicating that. And now they expect that other people is going to accept, you know, the status quo as yeah. such. You know, again, you know, they're going to say, oh, well, you know, like, what can we do about it? You know, we can't do anything, you know, this sort no. of bullshit. I, I think we can do something about it, but I, I do think that we have to, I think that what I said earlier, I'm not going to have any problem repeating it, that you had a chance to continue a truce or a peace or a pause, and you, and, and, and you, chose, you, choose mass, you chose mass murder. So that shows what you stand for, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You don't get another chance to, you, uh, you can't call that back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you know, but but the major powers will not declare war on Israel, mm. and that's I'm I'm not saying I expect them to, but they're not declaring war on Israel. No, but Hezbollah and, and Lebanon is going to declare war on Israel. Well, somebody has to declare war on Israel, not because I say so, but if okay, I was re, I was listening to this guy shot. Scott Ritter, which he, you know, I don't know if you know about, you know who he is. He's this American guy, yeah. supposed to be so anti, you know. He, he's a former U.S. Marine. He's developed some following in the U.S. And he was talking about how he went to Iraq with the U.N. to disarm Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. and he reminded me that Saddam Hussein had shot rockets into Israel. In in, uh, in in the past, not I I I didn't know that. Mm. I'm saying now, no one's even willing to do that. Mm. Yeah, mm. I, mean, I mean, right now, that was a government. 
Yeah. I'm not saying I like Saddam Hussein. I'm not saying, I, but I'm not saying, yeah. No one now is even willing to do that. And that, that just says something about, to me, about all the bluster of government. Or if you can't shoot rockets, what are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, well, what, what they're, kind of, what, they're, 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 they've got an opportunity to do something else, you know, because, you know, since that time, they've been occupied by the U.S. military. So they have U.S. military bases there. And well, no, 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 no. The seventh, I'm, I'm, you know, those military bases have been attacked 35 times. Yeah. So they've got, you know, like uh, part of the apparatus, you know, right there, you know, in their backyard. So they can take care yeah, of that. First. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. I, okay. I got your drill. So I think I that's going to happen as well. You know, that's going to be a, another front that's going to open up now. Okay. Thank and you. Yemen, for... you know, was respecting the, the ceasefire, the truce, you know, was being respected by Yemen because Yemen had declared war on Israel, the Houthi government of Yemen. So now they've, you know, like this ceasefire, this truce is over. So, you know, the Yemen is, you know, back in operation in the war against Israel again. And they've got four Israeli, you know, tankers, you know, under so their control. <laughs> they still have the tankers. Four of them. Yeah, they got four tankers okay. from Israel, owned by Israeli billionaires, you know, okay. transporting oil, most likely. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, well, good. I mean, you're... You're, so you you are you you give me some ex examples that uh, there is hope. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now Iran, you know, like if Iran, you know, sends missiles, you know, into uh, into like military targets, you know, of Israel, uh, Israel is 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 it real? <laughs> That's what I saw written one time. You know, is it real? You know, instead of Israel. If they do, you know, send in uh, missiles against military targets there and like airports, you know, destroy some airstrips, you know, so that the military jets cannot take off, that sort of stuff, you know, then Israel will retaliate against Iran. They're going to target, you know, everything that they can. They'll try to send, you know, F-35 bombers there as well, but I don't think they would get the permission to go through the airspace of, airspace of Saudi Arabia again like they had before. Then that would drag in Saudi Arabia to shoot down, you know, Israel planes that are going over its airspace. Wow, yeah, this can really blow up. Mm -hmm. well, uh, I, think, I, th I think the time has come. Yeah, to settle. As about, I mean, uh, well, settle I think enough has, enough has been done after yesterday or today's attack to show that to show the that the, the to show the close of of the barbarian. Yeah. Israel is a barbarian state. Yeah. Yeah. You had a chance for peace. You got some prisoners. You said, no, it's it's, it's time to start killing them again. No. Yeah. It's not cool. That's right. No. To start a war, you know, to start a war when it already stopped, you know, like that right. requires, you know, like some weird, you know, kind of, you know, motivation. It's a genocidal yeah. motivation that's involved. Yes, yes. You it's, know, Netanyahu it's, even referred uh, to the to the Amalekites as if the Palestinians in Gaza were Amalekites. Amalekites was a uh, a tribe of you know in in biblical history you know that was totally eradicated, supposedly. Okay. Now, if it's totally eradicated, you know how could you call up their presence again? You know, since they don't exist anymore. And yet, you know, Netanyahu calls up their presence, says the Amalekites are the Palestinians, and that it's the time to eradicate them. You know, this is, you know, like too much. This is, you know, like sure crazy is. time. It sure is. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll do some videos, you know, from in place tomorrow. Thank you. Do I'll that. cast them on Facebook and YouTube. And, uh, do that. and then uh, and uh, when possible, you know, perhaps uh, I can get this uh, system, you know, to work on my mobile phone and then we can do some... Uh, some updates, you know, in the coming uh, in the coming period, because you know we have to uh, cool. to stay on top of the, of this for sure. I agree. Okay. okay. Very good. That. Okay. Great. Thank you, Steve. All right. Bye. Oh.